Welcome back to Couples Goals. Valentine's Day edition. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. My love, how do you feel 13 years in celebrating Valentine's Day? Does it get easier or does it get more difficult to figure out things to do to celebrate? I think it depends on how much pressure there is. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like we have all kinds of days throughout the year that we celebrate our relationship. On Valentine's Day, I think it's more of a day of reflection, a day of thinking about the relationship. For me, having a nice dinner, nice conversation, that's kind of the goal, unless it's maybe on a Friday. If it's on a Friday, <laughs> maybe it's different, but we're talking slap dag in the middle of the week on a Wednesday, so there's not a whole lot you could do on a Wednesday, you know? I think it's just about enjoying each other. It definitely makes it tough to celebrate during the week, but I do think that if you are able to, it'd be fun to celebrate maybe the weekend before or the weekend after when it's not so crazy. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. If there was a place that you would want to go, like on a little vacation for Valentine's Day, where would it be? I would be down to go to like Joshua Tree or I'd be down to go to Big Bear or something like that where the weather is still a little crisp but uh, is it snowing over there right now in big bear it is but no not joshua tree i think those two places are cool i would maybe stay away from like vegas and things of that nature find somewhere where you could be a little bit more secluded that's why i like those two options do you think vegas is not like prime area to celebrate valentine's day I think if you're into Vegas, I hate Vegas personally. So I think it's just too much going on, though. I mean, it's too much to get wrapped up in when I feel like Valentine's Day is more about being just together and celebrating just the two of you. Yeah. Where Vegas, it's kind of hard to focus on one person in Vegas. It's like everything's going on all the time. You yeah. know, so that's why I like kind of a more reclusive getaway, I guess you would call it. Well, I think Vegas is cool if you're going to go see shows. You know, I think they have like cool shows, you know, like Miranda Lambert. Yeah. Or just actual shows. Yeah. I mean, do people go that far out on Valentine's Day? I thought Valentine's Day was kind of like more of a low key, intimate night. I mean, people are going to Vegas for Valentine's Day. Maybe they are. I don't know what people are doing. I think we might be putting a lot of pressure on people <laughs> out there for Valentine's Day. I mean, that's why I said it's just a nice dinner. It's just a moment of reflection and beyond all that you get each other a card maybe a couple little gifts and that's about it you know yeah. because we still have a regular anniversary <laughs> we have a wedding anniversary we got birthdays we got christmas wait what's the regular you know? anniversary whenever we started dating you know i don't know if we celebrate that necessarily you know you, we celebrate we that. do exactly and then that's and just to just to make it clear it's not really me who brings up the dating anniversary you like you really bring it up and enjoy doing that what's well, fun you know it's an important day <laughs> just like when we got married. Yeah. But I think Valentine's Day, it, a lot of it to me is like corporate capitalism type stuff, making you want to spend money. That's why I think the point of a relationship is to embrace each other. Yeah. If you need to go to Vegas to do that, if you're Vegas people, by all means, go to Vegas. Yeah. I think uh, one trip that we did that I really enjoyed, uh, we didn't do it for Valentine's Day, but I want to say we did it for your birthday, was... Um, in different states, they have this thing called like a getaway. And it's essentially what like a trailer. Uh, I don't know how big it is. It's like a tiny home. I think it's built on a trailer platform because they have to move them into these strategic areas throughout where we went. It was in the woods, more or less. And maybe there was 15 or 20 of them in this area and they all had their own specific views. So ours had a view of, I think, mountains and mm -hmm. trees. But you could also get ones that had view of the lake that was in the area you could probably get one that just had trees, but all of them had their own privacy and their own kind of vibe to them, which was very cool. Yeah, it was cool because you could see some of the trailers, but you weren't close enough where you were hearing what the people were saying and all day long. Yeah, and I don't think anyone's going there to eavesdrop on their neighbors. I think the whole goal is to be secluded when you're out there. So I think everyone kind of respects that as well. Yeah. And, Unless they're creeps. And, <laughs> and they had like a shower and a bathroom, even a little kitchenette. It was really pretty and it had... <laughs> yeah, it had the amenities. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's important. It also had like a big window in the back near the bed. So you really felt like you were dang near outside while you were sleeping. Yeah, it was just the bathroom and the shower, uh, at least like you know you were in an actual space that you could live within <laughs> well i really enjoyed that i think that's something that if we were going to go all out for valentine's day i think that's something that's it's nice like you said somewhere secluded i guess that'd be cool yeah well i thought it would be fun and jared was so nice to pick up a game called couples it just says couples on the box and then the back of it says so this is what it looks like and it says what's more romantic than being understood you're very romantic is it 
I guess. The, I mean, is it the most romantic thing? Is well, being what do you understood? think the most romantic thing would be if it's not being understood? I, don't, I was just asking. I do that's... you guys have a, an answer for that? Is there something <laughs> more romantic than being understood? And don't be perverts, okay? <laughs> We're all adults here. So this is a really fun game. They even have like a family edition, I believe, that have different questions. But this one is for couples. And I'm excited. I figured we'd play like a round or two because there's different levels. Let me open it up. So there's different levels. They have one, two, and three. And I think the questions just get a little bit more intense. They get more understanding. Yes. So... I haven't really looked at these questions. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, why not? <laughs> All right, you can go first. We'll just pick one out and then ask it to you? Yeah, you can just pick the first one. It's okay here. I'm just okay. going to do this. And there's a I red and a white side. I definitely didn't pre-pick them. <laughs> well, there's a red and a white side. Does so let's, it matter? I think the red one is more of like you write things down and then you share it. So let's just stick with the white ones. How about this? I like this question, actually. Oh, no. This is a good one. <laughs> Between the two of us, who's most likely to make us late for an event? Of course he would like this question because it would be me. <laughs> I think white people are always early to not, an event. No, not if you, always. I'm telling you, we're early and, and part of it is it's not really because we're trying to be ultra considerate. I would also say white people are usually the first people out. As soon as like it's it's time where it's acceptable to leave, you can go. They even have something called the Irish goodbye, which is what people do when they just leave without even saying goodbye to everybody. Yeah. Which I'm okay with. I don't mind it. Which, I don't really like the hassle of having to say goodbye to every single person. They know I'm going to leave, you know? Yeah. When I'm gone, they know I left. My family and I are definitely not like that. They're literally at parties, Jared will say, Sandy, start saying bye now because it takes you like 20 minutes <laughs> to actually leave. Well, because every goodbye is like a mini conversation. And then it's like, then you feel rude to leave the conversation. You have to say goodbye with intent. <laughs> You know, it's like, hey, I'm leaving. I got to get going. It was really nice seeing you. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Not like, hey, it was so nice seeing you. What was your favorite part? Let's talk about it for a couple minutes and get wrapped up in a conversation <laughs> about it. You know, like that's kind of what you do, I feel. Yeah. Well, I mean, my whole family, I don't know if it's like a cultural thing or if it's just our family that does that. I think it's cultural because in a Mexican household, if you walk in, if you don't say hello to every single person and give them like a warm greeting, it's offensive. Where in where I grew up or, you know, the household I was in, you just kind of wave, you give a blanket hey, everybody, and then everyone's like, hey, and then they go back to doing their thing. Yeah, with us, it's like, give a kiss on the cheek, give a hug, say hello to every single person. So it's a yeah. little bit more intimate. And but I, you make us late to events. I think I that was do. the original question. And I will say that Jerry definitely, I think when we first started dating or when we got married, I think when we started dating, he was very much like, hey, I don't mind if you don't mind being late for your family events, but for my family, like, let's not be late. But I don't even think people can be late to a Mexican function. I think they <laughs> usually, We'll say it's like 30 minutes before it starts to kind of prefix everybody on getting there on time. And then people just start showing up and who cares? Yeah. And then someone brings some squirt and then you have a great time. You know what I mean? It's not a real Mexican function if there's not a case of squirt. Oh I my. stand by it. I swear he's been saying this for years. <laughs> well, I feel like, I think it was, was it your mom's birthday party that was here? Oh, yeah. Where I said, we should buy some squirt. People are going to want squirt. And sure enough, one of your uncles showed up with the, the case squirt, of squirt. Yeah. And I got to say, I love it. Squirt is probably, I couldn't drink it all the time because it's very high in sugar. Yeah. And it's just like addicting, but I could drink a whole case of squirt. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to ask me a question now? <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you a question. Well, now that you grabbed all of them. I think Let's I got see. maybe 10% of them. Okay. I'm not looking. So am I just going to go through these? No, don't go through all of them. Don't cherry pick. Just, I landed, that was the first one I saw. It just happened to be perfect. Okay. You got to have some Hold on, it doesn't really, I'm just going to pick the first one on here. Okay. Okay. What assumption did you make about me that turned out to be right? There's no, is that really the question? Because that's the one that you told me over the phone was an example well, of a question. Well, because that was on the picture. I just grabbed the first one. An assumption of you that turned out to be right. Yeah. That you would probably make us late to every function that oh we go to. Oh my God. <laughs> that was right. Uh, you're funny, you know, and you have a great <laughs> sense of humor. I assumed that you had a great sense of humor and you do. And that was like your first assumption of me or just one of the assumptions. I thought you, you were, you'd be a good time, you know, and you ended a up being good a good time. time. Yeah. 13 years later, am I still a good time? You're still a good time. <laughs> It's, you're a little late to the good time, but you're still a good time. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's next. So let's try to do level two. Oh, great. I just, who cares? I got them all. I know. What is, so, see how I just did the first one? Take notes, everybody. That's how you're supposed pick. to play the game. You just, you gotta be decisive. <laughs> 
What's something we used to do at the beginning of our relationship that you miss the most? I don't know. I think there's a few things. Well, name one. I did enjoy like doing more scenic drives, but I mean, we're younger and we lived in an area that was more exciting to drive around at night. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to drive around in uh, <laughs> where we're at currently, but I remember there would be times where we would drive to like four or five in the morning. Yeah. And then because you could just when you're in L.A. or in that area, you could just Google like where a movie was filmed mm -hmm. or something that you see on TV. Like I remember one time we drove by the rehab center that was on Celebrity Rehab. Like there's always something, even if nothing is open. Yeah. There's sights to see. Yeah. Like if we were living there now, we would easily drive by Fast and the Furious house that where they film it. I believe it's in Boyle Heights. There you go. I've been there. <laughs> I've driven by it. I, I took a video. I wasn't. I wasn't selfish with it. Yeah. I did take a video and I showed it to you. Yeah. We. Were, I was very excited watching it. Yeah. But that's a place like, for instance, I think we would drive around to. That would definitely have already been driven by, or yeah. at least it would be on the list of where we're going to go yeah. to for sure. So that's one thing. Okay. All right. Here, there's your question. You just. Well, turned... here I'm just going to pick oh. this one. What's one small thing I do that tells you everything you need to know about me? Ooh. Interesting. One small thing that you do that tells me everything I need to know about you. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Nothing is more romantic than feeling connected. <laughs> and just while he thinks, I will tell you guys that these cards, so level one is a perception question, level two is connection, and level three is reflection. It's very cool. All right, have you thought of your answer yet? That's a tough one. Do you want like to pick another one? Uh, like, how about this? Could you answer that about me? Wait, what was the question again? What is one small thing that I do that would tell you everything you need to know about me? I did think of one thing, and maybe it's not like it tells everything about you. But we went to the grocery store the other day, and he was making fun of the Girl Scouts outside selling cookies. And he was like, nobody's going to punk me. Or he said something to the effect of like, they're not going to take my money. And then when we left, he sure enough, he bought a box. So I think for me, that just showed me that you just have such a kind heart. And, and even though you're goofy, you say things, I think ultimately you just, your heart wins you over and like, you know? Okay. I think I got an answer now. Oh my gosh. So this is mine was so good. As you were saying that even before you got it all out there, I was pondering on a few things. And I'm, I, <laughs> so yeah, were you even listening? <laughs> yeah. You helped me land. I was listening. You know, the fact that I was able to multitask right now should tell you everything you need to know about me. But like today, there was a stray dog or a dog you thought was a stray dog and you show genuine concern. And I feel like anytime you see somebody that you think might need help. Like one time, for instance, we were walking into a Ralph's and there was two like teenagers getting into a fight or something like oh, that. Yeah. And to me, I ain't trying to put myself in the middle of two 16 year olds fighting. There's a lot of immaturity there. It looked like they were throwing soft punches. I don't even think they could have broken each other's noses if they tried as hard as they could. I'm good just to walk past it and be done with it and let them get it out. But you really wanted me to like intervene myself and step in. And I think it's because you didn't want to see anybody get hurt and you wanted them to stop fighting basically, but you just really care about everybody and everything. And you're very passionate about people being taken care of and happy and all that good stuff. And I would say that says a lot about you. You're very considerate. That would be uh, the ultimate thing that I would get from that. I appreciate you're very considerate that. of people, how they're doing and, and their well being. All right. I'm loving this set of cards. I'm loving level two. Level three. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Here you go. I'm just going to take it's it. It's the last one. Yeah. So this should be the most challenging one. Well, this is reflection. What question <laughs> felt? Well, I guess the, 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 the question is what question felt most vulnerable for you to answer? However, we've only done like three questions. So I don't think that's a fair one necessarily. Yeah. I'm not cherry picking. I just didn't think that was a fair one. If you could prescribe a relationship one thing, what would it be and why? I want to say something, but it's going to sound cheesy. It, everything so far has sounded in touch. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of lactose in the conversation. Just what is it? I would say more time. Oh, that, <laughs> that, it couldn't get more cheesy than that. Only because, you know, we always talk about like... I might not poop for a week. <laughs> that was so cheesy. I'm constipated from that. Only because even throughout the day, we, like, I think we always communicate with each other that we just, like, we miss each other and we just want to be with each other. And I just think... That's a, that's a little codependent, <laughs> but I mean, okay. No, no, we don't always do it, but there are times where I feel like... We make it known that we're not together. <laughs> I'm 
just saying that I love you and I just would love to spend more time and experience things with you. Okay. And with that, you need time, so. That's why you married me, so you could have the rest of my life with me, you know? <laughs> and I get the rest of your well, life with my you. My love, just one lifetime isn't enough with you. Oh, okay, come on. I, I want to poop at oh some my point gosh. in my life. All right, you're See up. what happens, you guys? Well, we are just being super romantic. Level three, your question <laughs> to me, what is it? Okay, what's one difference between us that you love? That you like to make situations very significant and very memorable and very sentimental like you can't like when you threw a party you know yeah. like i just said i want a dude to come over and <laughs> dj a party you literally turned the whole house into an underground you know scenery sanctuary type situation and you just put a lot of care and love into everything that you do and you want everyone around you to have an amazing time and I feel like me, I'm just a little bit more low key and maybe I'm assuming that everybody is just having a good time as is. And maybe they are, but you go an extra step to make sure that people feel special. I appreciate Where that. I feel like I'm a little bit more heady with it. Like, you know, I, I, I'm not as much- Like barbecue at the park type of guy. Yeah, I feel like that's cool enough and we'll all have a great time, but you just, you really go a step above and beyond to ensure that this situation is gonna be memorable and you know, like you want to make sure that from everyone from the kids to the elderliest individual <laughs> is going to be able to have a great time. Where me, you know, it's like, hey, the kids can come if they want, but this is a party for me. You know what I mean? Like, I just want a DJ here. So okay. I, I think that would be the biggest difference between us. I would say that. I would say that for sure. And I will say, I think throwing a party or, you know, getting it all done up, I think to me, the best part is people's reaction. I love to see them, I'm not saying they're blown away all the time, but I love to see the reaction once they like walk in through that door. How does it make you feel? Like what kind of emotion do you go through or when you see someone's face light up when they walk in? You know, it makes me feel like, I don't know what ride, you know, think about it, but for me, I think like small world, right? Like when I'm getting into the ride of small world and you're just like in awe and you just have this like magical, I, I want to say magical, but maybe you guys might think it's a little cheesy. Are you describing how they feel or how it makes you no, feel? No, it makes me, because I think when I'm on that ride, I like to see other people on the boat to see them experience it. So it just makes me feel just really good inside. There it is. Is that like an explanation or did I not explain that? I think you answered a question. <laughs> But I think it makes you feel good inside would be the answer good. that we were going that's for. Good. That's it. Just super, just good. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's That's great. Yeah. Did you want to do another round or should we uh, continue with the questions? Uh, how about this? Let's just do one more question. Okay. Because I think we have people ask questions and they ask for advice and all that good stuff. Yeah. So we, we so should we'll get into that So we'll do one question and then both of us can answer it. How's okay. that? What's one way our relationship has gotten better over time? Mm. Hmm. You want to answer that first? I just feel like over time you begin to, and this is going to sound cheesy because it's on the back of that box, but I just think we have a deeper understanding of each other and that just allows you to connect on a deeper level. And also we've been through so much and we've been through so many situations that we've had to get through that now if we're entering a moment, I feel like we have a lot of history to base how we're going to react to it on. And I feel like that's one way our relationship has gotten better <laughs> over time. I agree with what you're saying. Because we've been together for a long time, we've learned how to connect. And also because we've worked really hard on our communication and being able to talk through certain either disagreements or decisions. So I think to me, that feels like so good to know that we're, we've done so well on our communication. So I wasn't trying to piggyback off of your answer, but... It was word soupy a little <laughs> bit, you know? <laughs> Ironically, I kind of had a hard time understanding... <laughs> what you were just okay, saying. Okay, bottom line, communication, okay? I'm glad we we've, we've worked on our communication. I like it. There you go, that was a couples game. I'll go ahead and link in the game in the description in case you guys want to pick it up. I thought it was really fun, did you like it? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think that's definitely something we would do like by ourselves, not yeah. on camera. <laughs> I think, it, oh, okay, I thought it'd be kind of like weird to do it in a group of people. <laughs> I think it's intended just to do by yourselves, but yeah. yeah. But I will, I think I would pick up the family one. I think that does seem like a good time. They did have two different versions of the game, which was actually this one, they didn't have it in the actual aisle, but luckily there was a cart as I was walking in. I believe it was a cart that they were doing backstock with. I don't think it was somebody's cart, but it was right there on the bottom and I just lucked out because three stores before that didn't have it. 
So it's very hard to get. I recommend probably just buying it on Amazon. Yeah, probably. And that's the link I'll leave in the description. So I asked you guys on Instagram if there was anything you guys wanted advice for. So I'll go ahead and go over the questions and maybe we can help help everybody out. Maybe we can, maybe we can't, you know? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Sometimes no advice is the best advice because you can't give bad advice at times. I don't want to ever give bad advice. Very true. If it's bad advice, don't take it. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> and it's subjective. Maybe you think the advice I think is good is bad advice. Yes. And I also said that it had it didn't have to be relationship related. So it's going to be kind of a mixture of, of different questions. It's like, what's the best topping for pizza? Yeah. That could have been one. <laughs> it's it's not one though. Or where is the best pizza? <laughs> and I would say Circle K. Well, don't give it away. I mean, I mean, they haven't seen the video. Obviously, I'm a 7-Eleven boy in this shirt. The pattern is very conspicuous and it makes me look like I have a big old bubble gut, but it's okay. Who cares? Well, why did you wear? Did you wear because a 7-Eleven is your Valentine or? Well, I mean, this is actually a Christmas uh, sweater that Shane got me. Shout out to you, Shane. Thank yes. you for this. I love it. But it's the only thing that I have that's red. Mm, you're trying to stick with the theme. Why not? I felt like it was the move. <laughs> so what are we, what, what kind of advice are we being asked today to give? All right. So the first one is how to make the first move on a guy for the first time. Okay. How to make the first move on a guy for the first time. I would say probably spark a conversation, share your intent. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, because I don't know, is this someone you just met? Is this someone that you know that you're looking to further the relationship with? But I think always getting your intention out there is the best way to go. So just spark a conversation and say, hey, look, if you've been friends, we've been friends for a while. I feel like there might be something deeper between us. I would love to explore that and find out. What do you think about us going on a date together, going out to see a movie, going to get some nice dinner, and just seeing where that goes? Now, if you're talking about just making a move, like a physical move, I think you just ask, hey, is it okay if I kiss you right now and just give a guy Whoa, a kiss? Oh, you're just going straight to kissing? Well, I don't know. I don't know where in this <laughs> scenario this person's asking. So I just want to cover all the bases. And maybe, you know, that means going to first base a little bit, you know, just a, a little smooth. I will recommend if you do know this person, I would probably ask him to just hang out. I think when you start labeling things like a date or, you know, like a long winded, like, oh, let's get to know each other da, da, da. why don't you just try to hang out and see how it flows with just the two of you because you never know maybe once you guys start hanging out you're not into it anymore yeah i, I think that that's why you date to find out if you're into it or not i, I like, think i don't like to label date let's just hang out yeah but what if you say hey i want to hang out with you sometime they say okay and then they bring another person <laughs> i think you should tell them that the intention of the whole you know going out is to get to know each other better and it's always smart to let people know what you're trying to do. That's my opinion. Obviously, we have a difference of opinion on this. Of course. like Right after is. we play the game that we connected <laughs> on. But you got to make your intentions clear, in my opinion. I agree. And I also think that, you know, you know the situation best. So kind of feel the vibe and see if it is something that you feel comfortable just to ask on a date. Or if you want to slowly get into that area and just ask to hang out. And if you don't know the person, Go for it, you know? It's going to be obvious that it's a date if you ask someone that you've never asked to hang out on a solo mission if they want to hang out. That's why I'm saying I think you just got to ask on the date. And if you don't know anybody, just go ahead and ask them out. I think just go for it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So the next one is some cooking tips that changed you. Use medium heat, not high heat, and you'll burn things less, less often. Perfect. So I would say that I learned that when you cook... You want to make sure your pan gets really hot where once you dabble some water on it, you want to see the water to kind of dance around the pan because it allows your meat or whatever you're cooking to not stick onto the pan. So you want to just have patience and let that pan get pretty hot. That's great. I think we gave the total opposite advice. <laughs> Do with it what you will. Yeah. Okay, let's see. How do you flirt? I always go in with the sense of humor if I'm flirting. You know, I like to make people laugh. I think people feel the most joyous when they're laughing. So I want them to experience a joyous moment with me. Yeah. If you can make somebody laugh. You can do anything. You can do anything. You could ask them if they want to give you a kiss, probably. <laughs> that, you know what the advice- You're the, just wanting everybody just to make out. I Because I think, you know, obviously there's a weird moment when the first kiss happens. And sometimes just breaking the ice and asking if it's cool to let it be is, is the way to go. Sometimes if you just feel it happening in the moment. But yeah, I think, you know, make them laugh. I agree. I think I was always like a like a weird flirt. I, I don't think I really knew how to flirt. So I just would always make people laugh. I think that was my go to as well. 
Yeah. There you go. Say a knock knock joke. <laughs> okay. Or How... just say, "Damn beautiful," and that'll probably make them laugh. <laughs> you can, and then you can say, "I was serious." You know, you're beautiful. Dang, just be like a complete charmer. Yeah, that's yeah. me. <laughs> okay how to get comfortable speaking on camera you gotta just do it and you gotta i think you said it one time that somebody said this in a video or, or whatever but just feel as though you're talking to one person mm. don't think about the potential of you know like we've all seen those shows where it's like don't worry there's only nine billion people watching and then people <laughs> like poop their pants and in, in nervousness <laughs> but if you if you're putting out content that you enjoy that you're passionate about it should be a little bit easier that doesn't really answer the question of being comfortable. You just got to do it. Like anything yeah. in life, just like driving. Some people are nervous the first couple of times they drive, but as you do it, you just get comfortable with it and it becomes second nature. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, because I'm obviously very new to this, I think that I'm not as nervous as before, but it's definitely a, a lot more relaxed, I think, for myself uh, recording. So what would the advice be? Just keep doing it. There it is. Yeah. Keep doing it. Because you know, you probably don't feel comfortable yet, but you'll get there. You can never grow if you're basing your life on feeling comfortable. <laughs> You've got to be uncomfortable to grow. Do you think it's comfortable for the caterpillar to be in a cocoon and then blossom out as a butterfly? That got to be pretty uncomfortable, but they do it. I feel like we're just giving like random quotes. Yeah. Given birth, probably don't feel that good. It's probably in a comfortable situation, but then life wouldn't be able to exist in the world if people didn't get birth, right? You got to go through some uncomfort to have a magical moment. Yeah. If anything, you should strive for it because that's how you know you're growing and, and you're making positive changes with yourself. Okay. Next up, how to leave a toxic relationship? Leave. I think the question is in the answer, but... You just have to, again, this is one of those things where you might feel uncomfortable. You might start to get in your head about it. You might think, I don't want to do this to the other person. Because a lot of times, even though a relationship is toxic, we can still feel a level of commitment to that individual. Yes. But you got to think about yourself. If you're not ultimately happy in a relationship, then you can't ultimately provide the happiest being to the other person in that relationship. And you just got to cut ties. So there's no real easy answer to that, but you got to find a way to leave. I completely agree. And I think that ultimately you just have to do it. You kind of have to take that, that leap of faith and put yourself first and know what your worth is and know that you're going to be okay without this person. And, you know, it's going to be a better you in the long run. What's the best way to get used to the cold water in the pool? You just got to dive in. Yeah. You know, obviously, if you put your feet in first and you start walking in, you're going to feel it a lot more, uh, you know, like getting into the pool like that. When you just dive in, and there's an initial shock. But within a few minutes, you forgot that the water was ever cold. So you just got to do it. Just like pulling off a Band-Aid. No more one-liners. I'm out. And sometimes, and sometimes it does take, you know, making an extreme move or an extreme change for this person to no longer be in your life. But I think that it's going to benefit you in the long run. Uh, so definitely don't be afraid of, of anything new in the horizon. So next step is going to be, oh, and also good luck with that, you know, positive vibes to you. Good luck. Yeah. Let us know in the comments how it went. So <laughs> next, so next step, cheap. Okay. They're asking for cheap, no cost at home Valentine's Day ideas. No cost is, is, well, I guess if you were just to cook a dinner with food that you already had that you didn't have to buy that day, mm -hmm. and then maybe find a movie that you guys watched, the, the first movie you ever watched together, or something that's significant within the relationship, or even something new, or maybe get some cards and play some card games. Yeah. Put some Legos together. Or watch, Paint. A, or watch a couple goals episode on YouTube. It's free. <laughs> yeah, I think those are all really great ideas. I think that you can definitely make your home feel more intimate, you know, with different ideas like that. Yeah. Yeah. So next one is how to handle arguments. They want to know exactly how to communicate or give tips on how to communicate. Well, you never want to talk in over generalizations or whatever they're called when you say every time, all, you know, everything, always, always because that's kind of it puts people on the defense. You just want to talk from your own perspective. You don't want to talk from the other person or or seem like you're blaming or anything like that. You just want to talk about how you feel and get that out there. You know, you you, you don't want to be accusatory in conversation because that's just going to spark more of a debate rather than a conversation. And then a debate or whatever that you would call it leads to an argument. So that's what I would say. I agree. And I think that 
the most important part I think in communicating with somebody during an argument is to listen. And like, I think that probably sounds so basic, but sometimes you're upset or you're in your feelings. So you to completely block out the other person, what they're saying. And like we played in the game, you know, we just want to be understood. So I think listening wow. and sometimes really what I've learned is you just kind of have to like be quiet, listen, or if it gets heated up, then you just need to walk away and do something that relieves that that tension inside of you so you can come back and have a completely different uh, conversation. And don't, you know, if you guys are having an argument or usually at the end of an argument, you're going to have a tighter bond because something just had to get out. Mm -hmm. It's just part of it. Don't think that every argument is going to end a relationship. Just get through it. Be a partnership in it. I agree. I think that's where those are really good. Uh, good God tips. gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. So we can listen <laughs> more than we talk. This whole episode is just you like giving these one liners, you know, yeah, some of them are two liners. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's see. The next one is how to help my partner when they're stressed or overwhelmed. Just be there for them. Don't over question them to death on what you can do because if someone is stressed, the last thing they wanna do is figure out what you need to do to help them. So don't just keep asking, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Just be there for them. Sit next to them unless they say, I just need my own space right now and just be there. Sometimes knowing that someone is there is enough. You don't always have to talk. You don't always have to interject. That would be my best advice. That's kind of what I like. I don't like being, you know, the the center of attention in a moment where I'm having a hard time. Yeah, I agree. And, and I also think that just to to know them so well where maybe, you know, you can make them dinner and not have to ask them questions or just take care of things that maybe would add to the, them feeling overwhelmed and kind of take care of those things without having it be a conversation just to get to it, you know? And, you know, maybe you just say something like, I don't want to make this difficult or anything for you but just know i'm here if there's anything i can do let me know but for the time being i just want to support you in the moment so i'm here yeah you know so throw out there i'm down to help but don't just keep asking them what, what you can do yeah. i guess i already said that and also, yeah. also just to remind you like you're not a psychic you know so you're not going to know exactly what they need all the time so i think yes for exactly like you said to let them know hey i'm here for you you just let me know what you need and to really create a safe space for them to communicate that to you. Or maybe tell them a joke. Try to make them laugh. Yeah. Or connect with them in a different way that with something that's not making them feel overwhelmed. Laughter is the best medicine, though. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Okay. How do you date someone that family hates? That's a tough one. There's probably a reason your family hates them. And very <laughs> often they have a good reason to hate that person. So if you know that your family hates them, you should probably have like a group environment where you allow the other person to really shine in a way that you feel your family hasn't been exposed to and give them an opportunity to see a different side of your partner. Because a lot of times too, we complain about our partners to our family and then our family knows more about we what we complain about than what's good about the other person. So if you think the relationship is worth it, you feel like they're being misjudged, you just got to give them an opportunity to bond and connect with that person outside of the way that it's currently been happening because obviously it ain't working. I completely agree. I think that, yes, everything that you said was yes. Sometimes we complain just out of, you know, we needing to vent and you know, it doesn't really shine a good light on them. <laughs> so yeah. I definitely think is to ask them like, hey, what is it about them that you don't like? Because maybe they just haven't gotten to know them yet or they just aren't seeing the, the version that you're seeing. I would say, though, if your whole family like really, really hates the person that you're with and you truly value your family's opinion, it probably is a matter of you, like you just said, having a real conversation with your family and say, hey, these are all the reasons why I really love this individual. I would just like to know a little bit more in depth why you have this disdain. Can you please relay information in a way where I can understand right now? Because maybe they'll open your eyes to things or maybe you'll be yeah. able to open their eyes to things. You know, Maybe we're just being a little bit assumptive at that point and there's some clarity needed. I agree, yes, to everything that you said and just to have an open mind that you know maybe Maybe they know best and who knows. Yeah, most of the time I've never met anyone who is in a relationship where the whole family hates the other person and it seems like a solid way to go because 
Because also sometimes that makes people like driven more together because my whole family hates them. Yeah. You know, now I got to make up for it and I got to do all these things. So take it as a note where maybe you should analyze that relationship a little bit. Yeah. And just know too, to let your family know that this person is special to you. And the reality of it is if they're nervous that this person is not right for you or if it's not going to work out, you guys are going to have to go through that and find that out for yourselves. Like you said, I think the more people pressure you on, you guys aren't meant to be together. It just really bonds you guys even closer. So, And it makes you have to prove that you are meant to be together. And that yeah. could be a little bit fake to the reality of things. You might be putting on a little bit of a front to prove somebody wrong. And you never want to make moves in order to prove someone wrong. You got to do what's right for you, ultimately, first and foremost. Yeah. Um, unless you are in a relationship where you started off being the person that the family didn't like. And now you guys all like each other. So let us know what you guys did or what happened in that scenario to help you guys out. You yeah. Know? Yeah. All right. So we have two more questions. This one is an artist is in a slump. How do I get motivated to do what I love? I mean, everyone gets into like either it's writer's block or whatever the case may be. But sometimes taking a little bit of a break, maybe take a little bit of a retreat, find somewhere where there's no outside influences, because if you're a true artist and it's inside of you, sometimes the best inspiration comes from moments of nothingness. When you just allow your brain to accept whatever information is coming at you. And I would say do that. Like I used to get writer's block and I wouldn't be able to be creative. And I would take a shower or I would go on a walk. I would put myself, maybe put myself in the opposite direction. Put yourself around a lot of creative people. Sometimes it's kind of intimidating to do that and you might feel like you're less than or whatever the case may be. But creativity begets creativity. So the two routes I would take are seclude yourself in a way where you feel peaceful. Maybe throw on some like classical music or something that puts you in a good mindset. Or talk to the most creative people you possibly can and shoot some ideas around. One of those two extremes is bound to work. You're just going through a temporary moment that is going to be overcome. So don't get stuck in it. I agree. And and really, he gave me the same advice. I remember, I don't know if you remember, but I'd asked him like, man, maybe I'm just not creative enough to do this. And he said, Sandy, he said, yes, you are. You just need to start getting creative and you'll become even more creative. Like you start to, those creative juices start to flow once you start beginning, even if it's, if it seems so small at the moment. Yeah. And just don't go into every project or everything thinking like this is, this is going to be a masterpiece and this is going to be amazing. Sometimes it takes like 10 bad ideas to get one good idea out. But once you get flowing, some people call it like riding the wave or, or being in the moment or being in the zone. Typically, you don't even know you're in the zone until you're out of it. And the only way to get yourself into the zone is be accepting that, you know, it might be a challenge to do so, but you just got to get yourself to that point. And don't be afraid to have some bad ideas. Or if you're writing music, don't be afraid just to write whatever you're thinking. And, you know, you're not being judged on art. If anyone's judging your art, then they don't understand your art. So, yeah, you can't ride the wave if you don't get in the water. You there know? you go. <laughs> okay, so our last question is... How to tell your husband you need a break from what he wants to talk about. I thought that was such a perfect question. Just say you got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, just cut it. That's your answer? Yeah, that's a good one. And say, hey, I got to go to the restroom. Give me like a few minutes here. Or just let them know. Be honest. There's nothing wrong with just being upfront and honest. If he's a dude, just tell him. You know, a lot of times when a guy is talking, we, we don't get that offended if you say that, Hey, you know what? I just need a break from this. I'm like super stoked that you're stoked. However, right now, I don't feel like I'm in the mindset to truly add to the moment for you. So, so think about it a little bit more and then let's come back to this. Yeah. Guys typically aren't going to get offended by that. It doesn't, you know, we're just stoked and we're talking, but we're just as happy to, to let you have a moment to recollect yourself. Yeah. I would probably say that after talking to them for a bit, I would tell them how exciting it is and then maybe tell them something that you really want to share with them to kind of start having a, a, another discussion. <laughs> because I think, yeah. you know, your husband, your partner, you know, they want to hear something that's exciting for you and it's important to you. So I think that they would be happy to change the subject. Or just zone out. <laughs> I mean... No, don't zone out. That's horrible advice. A lot of times, if someone's talking because they're really excited, they just... It's like the opposite of venting. They just want to go on and they want to think about it and talk about it and all this good stuff. 
if you zone out, they're not going to know. You just, you know, every now and then you mimic something like, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, you know, and then they think you're listening. Oh, and he's, then... he's a professional at that. Well, my grandma, she used to have a friend. Uh, I mean, well, I'm sure they would still be friends, My, you know, if my grandma's still alive. Yeah. But this lady, and shout out to you, Grace. I love you, Grace. You're, you're the you're, best. You're, you're the best. But you're a conversationalist <laughs> and, you know, really love to have a long conversation. And I remember sometimes my grandma, she wasn't rude by any means. But every now and then you just throw in a, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, you just do that to let the person know that you're still there. I don't think yeah. they really care if you're, like, super engaged in the moment. You just, yeah, okay. And then sometimes they'll say, hey, I don't even think I'm paying attention anymore. It's okay. Let's just go ahead and stop the conversation. That's horrible advice. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> we just played a game saying how romantic, it, what is it, like, the best thing to do is be understood? So just to reiterate, <laughs> one have to go to the bathroom. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> hey, I get like, I got to pee when I get excited and you're getting me so excited. I got to go to the bathroom and I might even have to poop. I can't promise you it'll just be pee. It might be poop. And then you buy yourself like five to 10 minutes. I, I think nowadays, what do you think the average time is allotted for someone to poop? All right. This took a turn. Because I if you take a phone in the bathroom, <laughs> like, do you think people are getting in and out in two minutes? No, did. I mean, I think if I'm trying to, like, be done with the conversation, I'd probably not take two minutes. I'd probably take a lot longer. How long is someone in the bathroom for until you feel like, we might have a situation on our hands. Are they okay? <laughs> like, at what point do you feel like you need to say, hey, everything okay in there? Like, 20 minutes. 20? See? So you potentially are buying yourself up to 20 minutes. Yeah. It might feel a little bit rude, though, if the person <laughs> is sitting there like, okay, I can't wait to keep going. I can't wait to keep going, you know, and then you're just in the bathroom for 20 minutes. But you at least got five minutes. Well, at least then when you get out of the bathroom, they'll be concerned. And then you can go back to like, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, let me tell you something exciting that happened today. And boom. Or you could just say something like, you know, the craziest <laughs> thought came to me when I was in the bathroom. Yes, that's a good and one. And then you could segue into that. Yeah. So say you got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> We've decided that will at least buy you five to 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. I'm feeling like, is everything okay in there? If I haven't heard any kind of movement. Uh, the and who's, who's to say you're even going to the bathroom? You know what I mean? No one takes 20 minutes to poop. <laughs> if you're taking 20 minutes to poop, you should see a doctor immediately. <laughs> we know that you're getting up, your feet are asleep. You've been on your phone the whole time. <laughs> the second thing, just be honest. Yeah. Say, hey, I get that you're like super stoked about this, but what if we just took a little bit of a break from the conversation because I'm having a hard time keeping up with you here, you know? <laughs> The third, just zone out. No, not zone out. Zone out. No. Let, let them have their moment and then just, you know, like keep no, it moving. No, not zone out. That's horrible advice. Dude, you're like flicking dog hair <laughs> all over the place. I feel like it's all over If me. you guys can't tell, we have Harper here and she's just shutting everywhere. Yeah, and you're petting her and like every time you lift your like, hand woof. up, it's like. Okay, so don't zone out. No glim of dog hair. <laughs> don't zone out. That's horrible advice. At least let them finish what they're what they're talking about, and then tell them how how interesting it is, or how happy you are for them that they're super excited about this, and then slowly, you know, enter a new conversation. Funny story. This was earlier on in our relationship. Obviously, this I wasn't can't recent. Wait to hear, but this. I remember one time I didn't really have the heart to tell you that I wasn't in a state of mind to completely pay attention to what you were saying. But it, I felt like halfway through, it was getting pretty serious. I'm like, oh shit, I don't really know like what to say here because I feel like I might have missed a few crucial moments. And then you asked me, what do you think I should do? Pro tip, you just flip it around. Well, what do you think you should do? And then they'll usually reiterate everything you need to know in order to give them good advice. That's not actually a bad idea <laughs> in the case if you are maybe doing something and your full attention isn't on the person. That's, <laughs> but I think always That's listen. a pro tip. That's a pro tip. It's, if you're not listening and someone says, what do you think I should do? Ask them, well, what do you think you should do? <laughs> and then it'll get you out of it. But also, like, you have to be considerate of people at the same time. Sometimes people are saying, yeah, go ahead. Tell me whatever you need to tell me, thinking that it might be a quick bap bap, and they might have a lot going on in their mind too, and it's kind of hard for them to divulge all of their attention to you, and it's easy to have a thought that kind of lingers a little bit and takes you away from conversation. It, it's an unintentional zone out. You know, It wasn't an intentional zone out, but I just knew in that moment if I said, can you just... 
<laughs> repeat that a little bit, it probably would have been bad. And you know, when I asked you, what would you do? You, you really said some, I don't remember the exact conversation. I just remember that being a time when it's like, that was a solid save. Oh my if I'm gosh. ever able to share that with another guy, or girl, for that matter. I'm going to do anybody. It. You know, because sometimes Hard we get to hate busy. On it. Yeah, sometimes we get busy or something happens while we're on the phone and you kind of not zone out. But sometimes you can't always multitask. You know what I mean? You you uh, don't hear a few things. So, uh -oh. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So those are all the questions that we have. Should we pull another card real quick or should we call it a day? I think one more card and then let's call it a day. All let, right. let, let's end this addicted off. addicted to this. But not a level three. I don't have the brain power right now for <laughs> level three. Let's just do a all level right. one. Let's see what he picks. <laughs> How would you describe my relationship with work in one word? explain loyal i would agree why yeah. is that because i think that you genuinely care about the people that you work with um and i think that the goal is something that you really are interested in reaching and i don't know i think you really enjoy it when you're on a team you got to just be about it you got to be in it until the wheels blow up whether it's from you know falling off or whether it's from burning so much rubber because you're killing it that they can't handle it <laughs> but if you're on a team if you enjoy who you work with you got to be a team player. So yeah. I would say yes, I'm pretty loyal. That, well, that's do you want to answer. answer that for me? I would say, how would I describe <laughs> your relationship with work in one word? I would say, obviously, I think like right now in your job, it's something that's kind of a new program. Everyone's getting their, their feet wet in it, figuring out the best way to go about things. But in the moments that you truly are able to experience what the job is all about, I would say fulfilled. Because you're able to be there for people, you're able to help, you're able to have a moment with individuals, and you're able to see somebody go from potentially feeling down to walking out of the room feeling happy. So I think fulfilled would be a good word. That's a good one. Perfect. I enjoy that one. Thank you, my love. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate you. <laughs> We're not going to do that again. So how are we going to end this Valentine's Day episode? What is the grand ender that we're closing with here? Do you think we should pick a card and ask them a question? Another card? Okay. But how are we going to ask them a question if they're not in a relationship? It can be. You can be. You're in a relationship with yourself. Okay, the perfect. best relationship you'll have is the one with yourself. So there you go. Ask this to your significant other and leave their answer in the comments section. Or ask yourself and leave your answer down below. Leave an answer down below for this question. <laughs> oh, no. He got all red cards, you guys. Let's see. Okay. Answer this question in the <laughs> comment section, whether it be you asking your significant other and it's their answer or it's your answer. How do our strengths and weaknesses... <laughs> okay, that's not... That's you, not you're, a he's like, you're going to have to reward him. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. What recent experience made you feel closer to somebody else? Ooh. How about that? What is something that happened recently that strengthened a bond with a friend, a significant other, a family member, a pet, whatever the case may be? That's an amazing question. Good job. Well, I didn't think about it. I just picked well, it up. Well, I know, up. but that was still a good one to pick. I worded it well, though. That's what it was. Yeah. You're so, good with words. On that, I mean, that's why they call me Upwords. And actually, on that note, let's, yes. end, it, let's end it on this. Yes. I've been working on this project for quite a while with my good friend Bone. And I mean, the dude is amazing. He's incredible. A, he's an incredible lyricist. I would say I'm pretty good, you know, and, and he's someone that I feel like every time we're on a track, he gets me and that's incredible. I actually made a beat for a song that we just did recently called Roulette. And one of the reasons I love making beats for this project is I just want to make beats to hear Bone on. And he did an amazing job. I did the best I could. Let's recognize these digging times we living in. Freedom of speech, all be free literally. Speak your mind, they cancel culture quickly. You're talking facts, they dismiss them swiftly. My history is like it's a mystery. But the music video is on both of our channels. So I'm actually going to link his channel in the description. I would love for you guys to go over there, check it out, subscribe to him. Show him some love. Show him some love. Yeah. You know, if, if anything, you're, you're going to feel the love right back. And after that, if you want, you can check it out on my channel as well. But make sure you go check out Roulette by myself and Bone. You're not going to regret it. No, it's it's amazing. I would say if you have no ideas of what to do for Valentine's Day, 
and you know, maybe that's a way that you and your significant other can connect. Just listen to the song like 20 times in a row. Yeah, and, and then talked <laughs> about it, about what it means to you. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a good, it's a very deep song. It's gonna make you guys converse about some things. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I definitely think you guys need to check that out. And thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys next time on Couple Goals. Bye. Bye. Eyes wide shut, lurking in the shadows. When we gon' wake up, no it's time for the battle. Now more than ever, it's so clear. So clear. They play in Japan, put a streak in the stick if they wait. They play in Japan, put a streak in the stick if they wait.